Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In this video, we're taking a look at the Radiolink AT10 transmitter, the Radiolink R12DS receiver, and the PRM01 telemetry module. Now you might be asking what the heck John's doing with a Radiolink radio, and the thing that got me interested in it was the over-the-air protocol. If you look on Radiolink's website, they advertise a 4096 resolution with 0.25 microsecond stepping. So they are very clearly calling out 0.25 microsecond steps on the output of this receiver. And as you know, if you follow the channel, I've been working on measuring protocol resolution and I've got a tool now that kind of lets me do that. So first we'll take a quick look at the Radiolink AT10 transmitter, and then we're gonna put this R12 receiver on the measurement tool and see how it performs. But first for you electronic gurus and tinkers out there, you need to check out pcbway.com. PCBWay has a full suite of services available to make your ideas a reality, including PCB manufacturing and assembly, CNC machining, 3D printing, and injection molding. When you're ready to order, PCBWay provides instant quotes, real-time production tracking, and you can order as few as five boards at a time, which is great for early stage projects. If you need an experienced partner to help bring your ideas to life, check out PCBWay.com. I have a link in the description if you'd like to give them a look. As far as the transmitter goes, there is an abundance of switches. On the top, they've got an F switch and an E switch. This one's two position, this one's three. And then on the right-hand side, they've got a momentary switch and they've got another three position switch. And then on the front, a couple more two positions here and here, and then a three position here and a two position here. The gimbals are plastic and they feel like it. This was definitely a little bit of a disappointment for this radio. They're okay, I mean, they move. There, I, I don't know what to say. I, I can tell you after doing some experimenting on the bench, we'll get into the noise situation in a little bit, but they're just okay. There are four trim switches. You've got vertical here and horizontal here, the power switch in the middle, a speaker vent, a lanyard ring, and three pots up top, which I really actually kind of like, and these pots feel really good. There is no center detent that I can detect, but the pots themselves feel very sturdy and fluid, so they feel pretty good. On the bottom of the radio, you've got a mode button, an end button, a cursor button, and a little jog wheel to navigate around on the radio. On the sides, there are sliders. I was actually surprised to see these. I did not expect this on this radio, and they feel pretty good. They're very notchy. Again, no center detent though, but they are notchy and they feel pretty good. Like when you move them and let go, they stay where you put them. No worries there. I kind of like this lever feel. It actually feels pretty good in the hands. On the back of the radio, there is no module bay for like an external module. The handle is solid metal. It does not fold down. And internally, I think this is probably the biggest disappointment on this radio. It takes eight AA batteries. Now, I'm sure that's fine for power levels and making sure you can fly for quite a long time. I don't mind that, but in these days, I really just prefer a rechargeable battery. So I'm not really a big fan of that. And then the other thing that I'm, I don't really care for is they use a standard JST plug. So there's no latch. If there's any kind of problem at all, that just pulls right out. Now, whether or not that battery arrangement is a problem for you, I'll leave that to your judgment. For myself, I would probably try and find a way to equip this with some kind of rechargeable battery. Overall, the ergonomics in the hand are just fine. I really don't have a problem with the way the radio feels in the hands but I'm really not a fan of these gimbals. They just kind of feel cheap, to be honest. Next up, I'll turn the radio on and we'll take a look at the operating system. I am not gonna go through a full configuration. I figure we'll just poke around and I'll let you see some of the menus in case you're wondering. One of the things I can tell you right away that I don't care for, lots of beeps. There's lots of beeps, no audio prompts so far, that at least that I've been able to discover but a lot of beeps come out of this little speaker girl. Now to get into different screens on this radio, you press the mode button and here you can see we're in the basic menu. And on this screen, you can use the joystick. And by the way, that joystick also kind of feels a little floppy. Like, I don't know, it, it's standing straight up, but I don't know, it just kind of feels floppy to me. I don't, I don't really care for it. But as I move the joystick down, we can go into model select and then you press the button. And then you can scroll and use the scroll wheel to choose a different model. Once you find the one you want, you can press and hold and that will load that model configuration up. If you want to back out, you can press the end key and you can go back into the basic menu for this particular model. So you can identify the model type, endpoint, sub trims, reverse, dual rates, throttle cut, idle down, and all of the rest of the goodies on here. So 
I think it's got good functionality for a computerized radio. It is very rudimentary looking. And as far as the uh, screens go, you know, they're, they're there. I mean, you've got this graph that will let you see what's going on with your dual rates. When you set them, you can determine what switch you want to use. This one's on SD. So I guess hitting SD turns the rates up and down and it's all there. You know, everything you need is there, but Compared to some more elegant operating systems, it's I guess it does a job, but it's not really attractive. It's just kind of very basic, if that makes sense. From the basic menu, if you hit mode again, you're brought into the advanced menu where you can do things like program mixes, set up flapperons, flap trim, aileron differential, snap roll. I guess there's a snap roll button. Let's take a look at that. I guess you can probably go ahead and add a switch to make a snap roll. I, again, not, I'm personally not a fan of that type of thing, but you know, if that's something that's interesting to you, you know, the functionality is there. Now, once we leave the mode setting by pressing the end button, we're back to the main screen. And then we can further move through other screens available like telemetry screens by pressing end again. So here is our servo screen. And as you can see, there's the aileron servo and the elevator servo moving up and down. So that's kind of cool. And then we can press end again and we've got telemetry data. So if you have any telemetry sensors plugged in, that information will show up here. And then if you press it again, you're brought back to the main screen. So that's just a basic tour of the radio, but what we're really interested in is this 12 bit arrangement. And I do want to show you the telemetry. Before we get into testing PWM, I thought we'd take a look at the telemetry setup real fast. On the receiver, there's a cable that comes in the box and you connect the other end of the cable to this little telemetry sensor. So a simple little connection right from the sensor into the receiver. And then on the back side of the sensor, you've got a balance lead and that is good for 6S. So if you take your battery and plug it in, we'll see voltage show up right here under EXT on the screen. And it's all, I already know the battery's low, so it's gonna alarm at me a little bit. So I'm just gonna plug this in. And there's the warning that we have low power. And if I hit end, you can see I can read my voltage right here on the radio. So I don't want that beeping at us for the rest of the video. So we'll just disconnect that. But that's the telemetry for voltage. It's very automatic. You don't have to do anything on the radio for it to work. And you know, I kind of like these sensors. I like this kind of thing where we can get battery voltage from our planes very easily on the radio. So I do give Radio Link credit for that little system. Although I'll warn you, the sensor, the standalone price on this is $18, 18 bucks. And the receiver, by the way, is 28. So you're starting to get up there, 46 bucks for this arrangement with the receiver and the telemetry module. All right, let's plug the R12DS into my PWM tester and let's see what happens with that over the air protocol. If you haven't seen my other protocol testing videos that I've done on the channel, I've got a little Nucleo F401 board paired with a custom binary that one of the Edge TX developers found. I've actually made some minor adjustments to the code so it's a little easier to understand. And the first thing we'll do is take a look at the min and max range on the pulse width for this radio. So as I move the aileron stick to the left, you'll see min pulse drop down and it looks like I'm hitting about 1067 microseconds. Now I'm gonna move it all the way to the right and the max we're looking at about 1930. So the range is only 864. I think that means we kind of want to get in and mess around with the outputs or the endpoints because you really want to see a range of about 1024. I just thought it'd be worth noting that in their standard configuration, we only see a sweep range of 864 microseconds. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is try and trigger, and by the way, you can see it, it just happened, where this 11-bit trigger occurred right here at the top. What that tells us is that there was movement. I haven't been touching the sticks and we saw movement. This is what I referenced earlier on the gimbals with noise. If you look at all these differential values, 43, 46, 11, 12, I'm not touching the sticks, that's noise. So that's one of the problems with this radio is that you cannot have 12 bit precision, which amounts to 0.25 microseconds, it's very small. We're looking for a differential of 25 when the gimbal noise by itself is 11 bit. So that's a real problem on this radio. And one of the reasons I think that from a spec standpoint, yes, they can claim 12 bit because I've seen it show up. But it, the reality is that the differential just from noise alone on the gimbals or the electronics inside, it's really not gonna let you really realize that 12 bit resolution. All right, with the software back on, I'm gonna try and move the stick and see if I can get a 12 bit hit. I have done it, but it is very, very challenging to do. And it requires a very, very sensitive light touch on the stick. 
And as you can see, the values that are scrolling by right now, even with the best small movement I can generate, there's one. I just got to hit at 41. That's 11 bit. So I'm very confident this thing is for sure 11 bit, no doubt about that. But hitting 12 bit, I've done it, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to repeat it for the video. It is very challenging to get 12 bit out of this radio. So yeah. Whether or not you can see it on the screen, I am actually moving the stick. I'll move it around so you can see that differential jump, but I'll come back and we'll try again for 12 bit. But again, very challenging to see it. I'm not sure if that's a combination of just the gimbal movement or the gimbal and noise, but again, very challenging to hit 12 bits on this one. There you can see a 10 bit hit that one came in at 84. So that's a trigger point at 10 bit. And there we are back to 11. There's another hit at 11. And another one at 11. Okay, I'm done fooling with it. I think that makes the point. I have seen 12 bits show up, but I just don't think from a practical perspective that you're really gonna see a practical deployment of 12 bit over the air with the system. And I would attribute that mainly to the quality of the gimbals and probably something going on in terms of noise with the radio circuitry inside. Oh, hey, look, there's a 12 bit. And I wasn't even touching the radio. You see what I mean? That's the problem I have. And if I leave the radio alone, you can just watch these differential movements going all the way up to 11 bits right there. There's 43 and I'm not touching anything. That's, that's just a lot of noise. That's not great. All right, let's get into some numbers. This radio system, the way you see it came as a combo from Amazon for 159 bucks. I'll put a link in the description. It's an affiliate link. So if you want to try the thing out and mess around with it, that's great. Uh, $159 at Amazon. The R12DS sells for about $28 standalone and the PRM01 sells for 18 standalone. So the two combined, that gives you 46 bucks. That puts the radio itself at about $113. With that in mind, I have no idea why somebody wouldn't choose the Radio Master Boxer instead of the AT10. Yes, this one has a slightly bigger screen and there's a couple of colors represented on the screen, but the audio prompts are not there. The gimbal quality is not there. The battery solution is not great. The quality on the, on the controls is just kind of flimsy. The Radio Master is just better in every sense. And the firmware, forget about it. Edge TX is a firmware. As far as I'm concerned, it's far superior to this. Now, with that in mind, if you're a beginner, if you don't have any help on Edge TX and you can muddle your way around, a lot of the work of programming is built in with a very structured menu system on the radio link. So I would give it credit for that if you're a novice. This is very much in my mind a beginner radio that just happens to have a pretty good over-the-air resolution. We definitely saw 11 bits, but that radio noise really has me kind of sketched out about 12 bits. Back on the subject of price, the Boxer standalone is $139. So you're looking at about a $26 difference. This one's cheaper than the combo cost, but then you've got to go out and buy receivers and telemetry. All right, that wraps up my video on this Radio Link system with the AT10 transmitter, R12DS receiver, and the PRM01 voltage telemetry sensor. I think for ease of use, sure, you, you can get this and probably get up and running pretty quick. And I really like how easy the voltage sensor integrates with the receiver. But the quality of the radio itself, the eight AA batteries on the back, the gimbal quality, and the noise I saw in the electronics, this one's not for me. I would take a boxer over the AT10 any day. If you like this kind of content, make sure you smash that thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know new material hits the channel. YouTube should recommend another video for you right about now. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and get out there and fly something.